few weeks ago, I made a video about building and testing my new rocket plane that is powered by solid rocket fuel engines and controlled using RC. It worked pretty well, so now it's time to kick it up a notch through adding an electric first stage to the aircraft so that we can air start the rocket engine. My ultimate aim with this aircraft is to fly it faster than any that I've designed, built or flown before. And this is the video where I'm going to attempt to do that. The modified rocket plane is going to take off from the launch ramp using conventional electric brushless motors. Once in position, the plane will throttle up to max power before I flick a switch on my transmitter to ignite the rocket engines. Firstly though, I need to install some new electric motors to the aircraft to see how well it performs on just the electric motors. Lots of you want me to use EDFs on my builds, so I decided to repurpose these 4,500 kV 50mm EDFs from my Tipjet helicopter project. After a little surgery to remove the old booster rocket engines, along with opening up the aircraft to install the new electronic speed controllers, I could attach the new fans to the underside of the wings. A few non-televised thrust tests showed a slightly underwhelming 1.2 kilograms of combined thrust from these motors. To find out exactly how fast these ducted fans would propel the aircraft though, it was time for an electric only test flight. As I set up the camera gear on a rather bleak day, I hoped the plane would have the acceleration to leave the ramp with enough airspeed to avoid smashing back into the ground and wasting a bunch of time. Time for a first test flight with the EDFs. Right, I'm gonna go into flight mode three. Flight mode three. See if I can get this thing off the launch rail. Oh, wow, that was unexpected. It's actually flying. That was amazing. I did not think that was going to work. Lining the plane up, I practiced my speed run pattern going backwards and forwards at maximum thrust. Okay, that's full throttle. I'm going to try and go under the drone. Wow! That's so cool! Right, coming around again. Going to go right towards us under the drone. Whoa! <laughs> I almost hit the wall. I almost hit the wall. I'm going to do one more pass, but this way. Right, ready? Three, two, one. Not bad, not bad. Okay, I might change my opinion on EDFs. These are pretty speedy. <laughs> right, let's bring it down and look at the speed. If I can get it down in one piece, that is. Coming around, I had no idea what my stall speed was or how the plane would behave in a stall. Balancing the airspeed with a descent rate was further complicated by a sudden onset of forgetfulness. Uh, oh. Wait, is that three is down, right? Yeah. With the flaps set, I could cruise it home, but then the airspeed dropped too low. Oh no! Oh, that was a bit of a tough landing there. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a kilogram airframe with tiny, tiny little uh, wings. Let's see what the damage was. Oh, disaster. Got a bit of breakage going on with the fuselage. The motors have completely ripped off. So the plane was damaged, but did we actually reach a decent speed with the EDFs? Okay, so we went 129 kilometers per hour. So we went about 30 kilometers per hour faster than with the rockets on the last one. So more work than I imagined lay between me and that personal record of 114 miles an hour. Firstly, I would have to rebuild the aircraft which had sustained more damage than was initially apparent. Clearly the EDFs had performed well, but I knew I could probably get more speed from an alternative setup, which would help to close the gap from 80 miles an hour. For that reason, I took the opportunity to replace them with the 700 watt 3000 kV outrunners, kindly provided by my amazing Patreon supporters. A massive thanks to all 22 of you, you really helped to make these projects possible. I installed the motors on the airframe and rebuilt the nose with the new laser cut parts. Got the uh, new compartment here which was smashed to pieces before. I've glued the tail on, I've shortened those vertical stabilizers because they uh, didn't really need to be that big and hopefully it'll avoid them breaking off again when it hits the floor. I mean, lands. Fully loaded up with four D-size engines in the rear, the airframe weighed a little more and increased the wing loading even further. I found approximately the right CG by moving the batteries forward in the nose. The motors would need to accelerate the aircraft much faster than previously on takeoff. Wow. 
Regarding how I was to light the model rocket engines mid-air, I'm not going to go into detail on this, but if you're into RC, you might be able to imagine how I used a brushless ESC combined with a model rocket igniter to make it happen. First remote test of the rocket engine. Three, two, one. Nice. That seemed to work quite well. All was ready for the next test. All I needed to do was wait for some good weather. Surely that's not too much to ask for, is it? Unfortunately, days of rain and wind left me with no choice but to attempt a launch on one of the better days in between the rain showers. Dragging two of my friends, Mike and Sam, along to help meant that I had a bit of added pressure to deliver some sort of result. Attempting something highly experimental in adverse conditions after trekking up a hill was a little stressful, but all I could do was to follow my checklist, prepare the plane the best I could, and have a go. <laughs> And in a mere moment, many hours were wasted, a concept was left unproven, and a plane was written off for good. Don't worry, this video isn't over yet. Although the OG rocket plane is now toast, I'm not going to leave this episode on a fail uh, where <laughs> nothing was achieved, or nothing of uh, value was achieved, apart from a crater. There were a few factors that led to the catastrophic failure of the last test. The main one, as you might have guessed, was the centre of gravity, or the CG, which was too far towards the rear. Failures are good. Showing failures are good too. But showing that I've learnt from my failures and that I'm building upon them is uh, yeah, what I want to be aiming for on this channel. So on that note, here is a very simple plane that I've designed and built over a couple of evenings to see if we can still prove the concept of rocket boosting a high-speed plane into unknown territories of speed, um, even though this is, of course, a far simplified and less powerful aircraft than the previous one. Using a simpler aircraft to prove the concept of a two-stage rocket plane in effect with an electric motor and a rocket engine might be a more sensible starting point. So, with that, let's go and see how this aircraft performs in the real world. Finally, I caught a break with the weather. Clear skies and low winds at the crack of dawn meant that I could trek out into the middle of nowhere for my next test with only a few interested onlookers for company. Hello. <laughs> These are the first viewers, so anyone commenting first you're wrong. I really hope that this test would yield some results, as building yet another plane for this video was out of the question. Staying safe with the rocket motor disarmed, I got ready to hand launch the aircraft into the unknown. This plane hadn't flown before. It was a completely new design. Would it even fly at all? Following a very sketchy launch, I climbed up to about 50 meters in altitude and started a clockwise high-speed pattern, trying the whole time not to lose control. Oh. Before running too low on fuel, I lined the plane up and went for a mid-air ignition of the rocket. Now I'm going to get in position for the high-speed run at full power. Full speed. And there it was! But then we had a problem. Owing to my forgetfulness, I had neglected to add a vent for the parachute ejection charge built into this motor, meaning that it blew up the underside of the plane. Thankfully, this explosion didn't take out the elevator or any of the control systems on board, meaning I could bring it home. Right, let's bring it in for a, for a landing. I think we've proved the concept. Or well, we've at least got some results from, uh, from the mission. Oh god, I'm so relieved. The high-speed landing was, once again, a little tough, but the mission was complete, and all that remained was to examine the flight data. That end's a bit burnt. 
Oh, look at that. That's funny. Oh, yes. Nice. <laughs> look at this. 175 kilometers per hour. So six miles an hour off my record, but this certainly showed promise. If you watch back the onboard footage, you can hear the motor noise increase in pitch as the rockets shove the aircraft forward into the oncoming air. Clearly there are a few disadvantages to boosting a hybrid aircraft like this. The props create quite a lot of drag and will probably over rev the motor if pushed much further. Despite this, with a few tweaks, I think the concept has shown potential. Now if you're wanting to build a rocket plane of your own, maybe you'd be interested to learn about the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. If you're not a fan of learning new things the traditional way, for example reading books and attending classes, Brilliant might be the learning platform that you should be using. Brilliant is an app and a website that develops critical thinking and problem solving abilities. It helps you to develop quantitative skills in maths, science and computer science. Wherever you are, wherever you're going, you can be constantly bettering your understanding of subjects that will benefit your hobbies and interests. If you're wanting to get into aerospace engineering, then I definitely recommend that you check out these few courses here. Classical mechanics is a helpful one as it teaches you the foundational building blocks of physics when in motion. If you want to build a rocket plane, it's a good course to have gone through. This one is pretty good for keeping your maths up to scratch. Number theory is a good bedrock course too. I love how you can use this app anywhere when you're out and about. It's quite addictive in a good way. There are loads of courses that you can choose from and they transverse many different subjects that you might be interested in. The first 200 people to sign up using the link in the description will get 20% off their annual membership. So do check that out. Right, I'm going to go and get some breakfast because uh, I'm pretty uh, hungry. I got an early start this morning. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching it. Um, yeah, it took a lot of uh, effort and time, um, but yeah, I think it was worth it. And yeah, I will see you in the very next one. Subscribe if you're not already, like the video. Uh, thanks so much to my Patreons and of course to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to making the next video already.